I can forget the things that were the day before yesterday, but all that happened 75 years ago, I will never forget. That we shall tell last names and first names of executioners, but not their nationality. So listen to this, and then you can say that I'm lying. I'm more concerned that the tragedy of Baba Yar is not repeated. And it is a sin to think that it cannot be repeated. It happened that our editors have found the last eyewitness of Babi Yar, the tragedy of Babi Yar. Initially, we wanted him to tell us one more time how it was to do it in front of our audience. But his story was so, how to say, humanly painful, sorrowful, dramatic and tragic, that I, the man is 81 years old, I, frankly speaking, I thought it would not be right to ask him for the second time to tell the same, all the more to tell it to the whole Ukraine. That is why we decided to up and prepare his story for people to watch and hear. That's the way he saw it. He was only six years old in those days when the Baba Yar tragedy took place. Here it is. Such things cannot be forgotten. I can forget the things that were the day before yesterday, but all that happened 75 years ago, I will never forget. It will live with me. In 1941, September 28th, at all stakes, fences, houses and buildings, there were such little of this size announcements saying all the heaps of Kiev, communists, and come some all members must come into view on Sunday, the 29th, to Babin Yar district, on the crossroad of Dekhterivska and Melnika street, to come take money, documents, and valuables along. And I didn't read it in these official announcements. Just people spread the word. My mother heard that too, and also food for three days. From Seret's district, the Jews will be evacuated far from the combat operational zone somewhere to the rear area. That was something like a march of children, old men and women. In short, they imitated the situation as if they sent people away on the train, as if people were sent out somewhere with music. Trains are droning, carriages rattling. All people are moving peacefully. But when we approached the cemetery, when the shots were already heard, they suddenly became audible to us. And the noises, those music sounds were so loud that the shots were completely muffled. So screaming all around was muffled too. So why were people shouting? Many of them just lost their minds. Clara saw me, raised her little hands and cried, Misha, I want Aki. And she ran towards us. That policeman drew upon her and knocked her block off. Bang, just gave a thump on her head from above. She fell down, but he hit her again, hit her in chest and knocked her down. Mother saw that and fell unconscious. The baby out of her hands. The baby was crying and that man came closer and kicked our baby with his boot. Mother was shot. All that happened right in front of my eyes. Me, personally, 
All these two years I lived in occupied Kiev, I wasn't even afraid of those Germans, so much as of the policemen. Now, we asked our people here in the studio, we put two questions, which I want to show you at once. The first one, are you sure you know all the information about events in Babi Yar? Ninety-one percent of Ukrainians consider that they have lack of full information about the tragedy in Baba Yar, because nobody talks about it, and nobody tells, and nobody writes about this issue. I mean even literary works. Then we asked, and that is very important, do you need to know all the details and full information? about Baba Yar tragedy. You see, 91% do not know the entirety of this event, so we asked them, do you need to know that truth? And this is interesting that the same 91%, this is amazing, isn't it, answer they need to know the truth. September 27th, the President of Israel, Reuven Rivlin, speaking in the Parliament of Ukraine, stated that the Ukrainians, in particular the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists, are involved in the tragedy of Babi Yar. However, Babi Yar is a symbol of Ukrainian Holocaust, so it refers actually to Holocaust. I have been offended as the Ukrainian and as the Ukrainian Nationalist. I have been offended because this is an absolute lie. And I do not know who prepared this speech for the respected President of Israel. However, you know, it is time to finish, finally, with all those false myths on which billions were thrown out once by the Soviet Union in order to poison with lie not only unconscious Ukrainians, but also the world community. The truth is starkly different. It was Ukrainian nationalists who helped Jews wherever they could. However, it is a myth that we have heard from the communist Soviet Russian propaganda for decades that Ukrainian nationalists participated in the liquidation of Jews. I am not surprised with Mr. Mihailo, who told us here he knew that they were Banderitsi because he heard it there. Well, I'm not surprised, because this person is really misinformed by that propaganda, but it is not suitable for the President of Israel. I think there will be enough goodwill and common sense to apologize for this very frustrating mistake. Listen. I have great respect for Mr. Hmara, but he is not a historian, and everyone needs to know it. If I am considered as a friend of the Ukrainian people today, when hopefully liberal Ukraine begins, it is not necessary to cover historical facts. If in Ukraine, this tragic history is not considered honestly. As Ukrainians help Jews, but also they exterminated Jews. And there were extreme nationalists. I do not agree with the words of the President, Mr. Rivlin. He used the word many. Many Ukrainians exterminated Jews. I do not agree with that. However, there were Ukrainians who exterminated Jews, as there were Poles, as there were also others. And it is always necessary to remember the most important fact Everything, everything began from Nazi Germany. However, 
Not everything told by the Soviet information is a lie. There is sometimes a historical truth too. So well put by Leonid Finberg during this discussion in due time that we shall tell last names and first names of executioners, but not their nationalities, as well as we shall refuse some absolutely totalitarian approach of collective responsibility finally. And by the way, Ukrainian nationalists participated in the Holocaust. I said by the way because it is no need to speak only about nationalists in this context. A lot of Ukrainian communists participated in the Holocaust too. In Donetsk, in Stalin, in Dnipro, in Kharkiv, people who collaborated with the Germans were very often the communists. The communists. And it is typical too. It is typical that in each society there are many people who can collaborate here in Ukraine, in Russia, in Poland. Yes, it seems to me so, and this is my last word for now, we should not only talk about Ukrainians. All gradually are collaborators in Ukraine. Gradually, vast majority of people had nothing in common with the Holocaust, but in each ethnos there were a few people who collaborated, as well as among Russians, Poles, Crimean Tatars, Germans, obviously among Ukrainians too. It is not an ethnic question, it is a sociological question. Let us become the voice of those who cannot speak today anymore, and now I am, as the chairman of the OUN, simply obliged to be Olena Teliha's voice today, the voice of those 621 members of our organization who gave their lives for the Ukraine in Babi Yar. And it is obvious we will not allow anyone to stain the honor and dignity of those people as we are here today, because they were there then. And there is a very wise saying, those who do not remember the past do not have the future. But from everything which was told today here, especially about the speech of the President of Israel, I have made one conclusion. I'm more concerned that the tragedy of Baba Yar is not repeated. And it is a sin to think that it cannot be repeated. I'm afraid of such people as Azov Battalion, such people as Tornado Battalion. I know historically that there is domestic anti-Semitism, but not willing to admit truth either on the operating table or in history class leads to history repeating. This is what I wanted to say. You know, we often say that it is the tragedy of the Jewish people. It is not entirely correct. And people in Europe realized it long time ago. It is the tragedy of each nation in particular. In Germany, the German Jews were destroyed. The German Jews were a part of the German society. In Lithuania, the Lithuanian Jews were destroyed. And everybody understands that it's not the Jewish nation and not the Ukrainian nation. Ukrainian Jews, a part of this society, were destroyed. And each European society anyway faced it and solved this problem, because it is a huge complex of fault and responsibility. There is still a long way to go. And we've got many things to do back there in Lithuania. But when US troops and NATO soldiers visit our parliament, saying, OK, what are your values? We are ready to die for you. I guide them through the entire Lithuanian history, our victories and the 1410 Grunwald battle, and the restoration of independence and the decision of the nation to fight for their country. And then I tell them about the Holocaust. And they ask me if the young people are interested, emotionally touched by this topic. So I hope you will go through it. I have hope for your good Ukrainian hearts, for your decent treatment of your history. And I hope for your scrupulousness, Hope that you will take them all as inside people. I listened carefully to the respected Stepan Khmara and other speakers. When they say that the OUN, the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists, 
fought for the free and independent Ukraine, it is true. But they conceal the rest of this slogan. The second part of the slogan is just as important as the first one. When they say that the Ukrainian nationalists for for free Ukraine, but free from the Jews and the Poles, and here we go. I came here for a reason. You're lying. I came prepared. I came with documents and respective statements. The program documents of the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists of both factions, led by Bandera and Melnik. And the historians who are present here, they are all well aware of this. Quote them. The KGB or the FSB, they can concoct any document for you. Would you have some courage to listen? It's tough listening to this crap, you see. Okay, wait, we haven't heard a thing yet. Let's listen. Well, you can't just say this is nonsense a priori. Well, the man is going to repeat Putin's propaganda. Okay, listen to this Putinist propaganda. There is life and facts, and there is a lie that doesn't match these facts. I know, and I've seen them. These are the documents that I, that I'm holding, that were not released in Moscow. These documents were released by the Academy of Sciences of Ukraine, the Institute of History of Ukraine, and I really trust Ukrainian historians. And as a Ukrainian Jew, I'd like Ukrainian nationalists to treat Jews nicely. I want to find the source of that treatment. And I wish peace for all of us, because it's a guarantee for the future of children. Get to the text, all right? Now, here's the program document of the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists, led by Bandera. As for the national minorities policy, the policy towards the national minorities, which included Jews... What's the name and release date of the document? Let us listen already. The national minorities are divided into friendly ones, those who are still ruled by someone, and the hostile ones, Russians, Poles and the Jews. Now the next one, the verbatim of the session. May I have the word later? The session of organization of Ukrainian nationalists in Lviv. Date? July. July 16, 1941. Linkovsky. That's a lie. Mr. Linkovsky. Yes, it is a lie. Stepan Linkovsky is one of the ideologists of That's the organization of Ukrainian nationalists. The document that is about to be quoted has no beginning, no end, no date. In this document, some Linkovsky, God knows if it's Stepan Linkovsky or somebody else, says he supports the Nazi methods of extermination of Jews. All right, let me quote it. What kind of document is it? Who and when created it? It absolutely doesn't reflect the actual position of the own. I'd like to stress what's going on now. It's deliberate mixing of the real authentic documents created in particular time with documents that were obviously faked. As a matter of fact, this half-truth or half-lie, such mixtures are exactly what people do to distort the history. And I will quote. <clears throat> Please keep on quoting. <clears throat> So, as a result of that, Mr. Lenkovsky... Not Stepan. That's Samad Lenkovsky. Would you stop interrupting? Let him talk already. According to that conversation and the session where the verbatim was recorded, he says that he'll go for every method to destroy Jews. You know, it looks extremely annoying when you come here and say, I want peace with Ukrainians and stuff like that, and then you actually start a war. Do you understand that many future generations will be watching this show? But today you are sparking this war. Yes, perhaps. Maybe there were some Ukrainians who proved to be villains, as people said. But that's more like social issue and not that of the nationwide scale, like the sociologist said. Because villains are everywhere, I am asking Savik and the rest of you to not let this man talk anymore. So listen to this, and then you can say that I'm lying. On October 2nd, 1941, the newspaper, Ukrainian Word, October the 2nd, is the day in Kyiv when the ground in Babi Yar moved. 
because of the bodies of the dead Jews, and the blood was running there, and the police still executed more and more people there. So what I'm saying is that the newspapers, editor-in-chief Ivan Rogach and own member wrote the article stating that the Jews are Ukraine's main enemy. How would they know who's the Jew and who's not? Can you tell the difference between me and a Ukrainian? The Nazis who came, what, did they speak Ukrainian? How could they know who's who? Maybe you forgot about the police? You're juggling with words. Your goal is to cast a shadow over the Ukrainian patriots. We are not talking about the banal things here. My goal is... I like to say... Whose pocket are you playing into? If we really charge some Ukrainians with taking part in the Holocaust, let's not charge every single Ukrainian, let's find out their names instead. We can do this, and now we can conduct such researches. I prepared for the speech, but now it sounds pretty much like the SBU and the KGB agents are figuring it out. I would focus on two important things that perhaps are the basis of our conversation, the issue of responsibility and the issue of lesson. I'll start with the Babi Yar. Why is it so crucial? It's not just because we remember it, but because there is some sort of feeling that such tragedies can repeat. Not on the national grounds, but on the social ones. Now the war in eastern Ukraine, how much do we know about it? How many actual fatalities are there? Are there any secret grave sites? Are all dead people buried? Did we investigate all the war crimes? Do we know names of all criminals? All these questions remain. The activities of those involved in this conflict, the separatists, those on the Russian side, on the Ukrainian side. Do we know enough about the relevant documents and relevant decisions? That is, the issue of responsibility for the Second World War, for the Babi Yar tragedy, is quite up to date. We just perceive it through history. Another thing is related to responsibility. Every criminal has to face consequences for executions, for every crime committed against people. And I agree that all collaborationists of Ukrainian origin who make us feel ashamed, we'd like to ask forgiveness of those who now honor the memory of the victims, the forgiveness of the Jewish people. Just like a German citizen here asks for our forgiveness, I as Ukrainian citizen apologize for, I'm ashamed of what happened then. The question is who is responsible for what? The answer is every criminal who pays with his life and his fate. But political organizations are responsible for politics and political decisions. And let me explain this very carefully. What's the problem with the own? I don't think this organization had enough power to decide. But it's not like all people there were crazy. The involvement in such crimes... We won't find a single proof of that, and that must be what we call a historical truth. They are right about standing for their leaders and the decisions they made. But what's the problem with OWN and the modern nationalist movements? The very idea that the Nazi Germany would help solve the tasks of the newborn Ukrainian state was a wrong way, a huge deception that confused many people and led to tragedies of thousands of people. This idea motivated many people, not necessarily the OWN members, but it also led to death of the many. So the historians say that these 33,741 people were executed solely by Germans, the units shaped exclusively of the Germans. These were an execution squad and two police regiments. That's true. But where were Ukrainians then? Because we heard your witness. The Ukrainian police convoyed the Jews as they walked down Dekhterivska and Melnikova streets. So they just convoyed people. They never killed them. Is there any responsibility for that? Of course there is. We're losing time in vain on the path of reconciliation and understanding that we should go through. We're stuck in these arguments, like these we have seen today in the studio. We cannot continue to be a nation of victims, neither the Poles, nor Ukrainians, nor the Jews. We cannot cultivate our victimhood, because then we cannot see anything else. We do not accept any claims, we do not owe anything to anyone, everyone owes to us. This way is futureless.